Palestine protesters shutting down a parkway. This morning will break down everything demonstrators are demanding. And storms tracking through uh, Missouri and Iowa this morning when they'll get to us next. Plus, putting abortion back on the ballot. The group that wants Missourians to vote on the issue this November. Today in St. Louis, Weekend Edition starts right now. This is Today in St. Louis, focused on you. All right, well, you're waking up with a live look at St. Louis's annual Cinco de Mayo Festival, which takes place on Cherokee Street. That's all happening from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. today. Organizers are setting up right now. We'll actually be talking to those event organizers about what to expect this year later on in the show, so make sure you stick around. Good morning. It's Saturday, May 4th. I'm Mercedes McKay. Thanks so much for waking up with us. Travis Cummings has the day off, but as always, we have the fabulous meteorologist Tracy Henson. And Tracy, you're tracking some storms that may come in later today. Yes, I am, and I'm seeing a lot more sunshine out there, which is going to give some more energy. It's going to uh. potentially power up those storms this afternoon so we don't want that uh, we don't really want that but i've learned nice. from tracy no <laughs> sunshine when storms are coming no no, no. when we have afternoon storms in the forecast you see the sun it's going to provide extra energy it's going to power those storms up a little bit it'd be nice if we could just avoid that severe weather all right, so we have this big line that's coming through. It is falling apart a little bit. That's just kind of the time of day we're at right now when our atmosphere tends to stabilize. Now, this same line is going to hit some warm air that's been charged up with a bit of moisture as well, and that is going to power off some storms later today. We do have a slim potential for some severe weather later today, and that is why we are in a weather alert. So we are in a marginal risk for severe weather. We could have a few isolated storms that could grow to be severe with hail, up to one inch, wind gusts up to 60 miles an hour. The potential for an isolated tornado is always there on severe weather days like today, but it is more limited of a threat today. 82 degrees for our high temperature, winds out of the south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Coming up, I'll outline what you can expect and our next chance for severe weather and more rain. That time of year, Tracy. Well, this morning, some intersections and highway ramps near Forest Park are back open after an hours long pro Palestinian protest. Demonstrators blocked roads near I-64 and Skinker and even got into a skirmish with the driver who tried to drive through the group. Five on your sides, Robert Townsend was there for it all. The huge crowd of pro-Palestine protesters first marched from Forest Park down Skinker to Forest Park Parkway. They held a variety of signs and chanted free Palestine every step of the way. They immediately shut down the intersection, huddled in a circle, and stopped dozens of drivers. Several frustrated drivers made U-turns and quickly crossed over the median to get out of the traffic jam. One man actually drove through the crowd. Demonstrators rushed to stop him. When he got out of his car, a fight broke out. The guy hopped back into his car and then drove to the opposite side where police stopped him. Protesters then kept marching down Skinker, shutting down every intersection before finally making their way to I-64 and shutting down the east and westbound ramps at Skinker. The demonstrators told us more about their clash with the one driver and their demands. Um, he tried to run people over and he got out and started like punching and swinging at everyone. And then he hopped back into his car and then tried to run more people over on his way out. It was very terrifying. Were you guys ever violent? No, never. I, I never. Being violent isn't going to solve anything. More than anything, they're asking for a permanent and total ceasefire. I mean, that's only the right thing to do. I'm proud of every single one of these young people who come out to exercise the First Amendment right. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Now, all week, we've been digging into the demonstrators' top demand for WashU to divest from Boeing. The university's endowment fund is worth $12.5 billion. Now, most of that fund has restrictions on how it's invested or spent, but a small portion, roughly $270 million, doesn't. This morning, our political editor, Mark Maxwell, examines how much of that, if any, is invested in Boeing. Campus protesters echoed a common refrain nationwide. An end to funding war profiteers. One of America's five largest defense contractors is based here in St. Louis. Some of us were prepared to get arrested because we felt that's how important that this was. 
that watch you divest from Boeing. British-based human rights group Amnesty International documented these bomb fragments in Gaza and traced their serial numbers to Boeing. It says the two October Israeli airstrikes came without warning and killed 43 Palestinian civilians, including 19 children. Our universities are being challenged now. Fundamentally, who are they for? Are they for war contractors? But what's the evidence WashU supports Boeing with its money? In their letter calling for WashU to divest, students acknowledge they're not quite sure. It says you don't know if WashU is actually invested in holdings of Boeing stock. So, I mean, I think divestment also includes more than just financial, though, right? There are programs on this school that are like the Boeing programs. Boeing has supported WashU with tuition assistance and internships. In 1997, WashU's Olin Business School used endowment funds to launch the Boeing Center for Technology, Information and Manufacturing. It's that appearance of financial partnership that bothers this campus protester. It's in their like statement of how they invest is to do like some statements of ethical lines. In its documents, the endowment fund says it does not seek to profit from the violation of basic human rights. To then say, yeah, we can associate with them, we can kind of support them, and then also say we support education across the world, we support ethical investments. In 2020, Chancellor Andrew Martin wrote, quote, we are equally committed to being more transparent about the endowment, and it currently has absolutely no exposure to private prisons or weapons manufacturing. We asked if that remains true today. Neither the chancellor, the chief investment officer, nor chief operating officer would answer. Reporting in St. Louis, Mark Maxwell, five on your side. Now, if WashU holds stock in Boeing, and if it were to sell, it would be an extremely small portion of the $103 billion company. But that portion could grow if other college protests across the nation persist. Just earlier this week, Portland State University agreed to temporarily cut ties with the company amid student demonstrations. Well, you could see abortion rights on the Missouri ballot this November. That's all because of advocates who brought more than 380,000 signatures to the state capitol over in Jefferson City. Now, that's more than double the signatures needed for a constitutional amendment restoring abortion rights on the November ballot. Members of Missourians for Constitutional Freedom had just three months to complete the task before that May 5th deadline. It's for your sisters, it's for your children, it's for your mothers, it's for your friends. All of this is for other people, more so than something that I want to do for myself. The Secretary of State's office has until July 28th to certify signatures from the petition. The ballot measure is expected to face some legal challenges over the next few months.